those look like birch. I mean, that there's, if you're on stage or if this is a, a showcase somewhere, uh, th this just straight up is gonna fool people. It's gonna look like birch. Hey everybody, whether you work in the theater or whether you work in retail or you just want these around the house, there seems to be quite a demand for birch logs. And I'm gonna show you a great way to fake birch. We're gonna start by making some cool bark. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you how to make them into logs that really sell for the theater or in your store display or uh, just at your house too. So this is a creative idea share and let's get into it. This is a creative idea share that you can watch from there to help you be aware. You can even watch it in your underwear. A creative idea share. Okay, so about six, seven years ago, I designed a set that had just a ton of birch ornamentation all over it. I had birch logs that were crisscrossing and they were making up the proscenium. They were framing in the whole set uh, and I loved the design. What I didn't bank on was where was I going to get all this birch and I had never made fake birch before So my idea was I'll just have my technical director go up to northern Minnesota and actually get some birch logs and he brought some back and man Birch for real is super heavy and I would need like a sawmill to actually saw this up to make half birch logs and stuff so uh, that was ridiculous, <laughs> way too heavy. So then what I thought was, you know what I'll do is I'll harvest the actual birch bark. I will, I will harvest this, I will take this off of the birch logs and then I'll wrap it around cardboard tubes. To take birch bark off of a birch tree takes forever. It was so tedious, I could it was, it was like, there was no way that that was uh, a possibility anymore. I, I think I took like eight hours just to try to debark one tree. Um, and I didn't really know what I was doing, but it was really labor intensive. So then I thought, okay, how, how am I gonna do this? Well, uh, the, what I've come up with is, it's just really not that hard to paint birch bark. It's pretty easy to make birch bark just on, on paper. Uh, and so I, uh, I, I figured an easy way to make birch bark and then you can wrap it around just about anything you want. Uh, and it looks better than like arts and craftsy tissue paper birch bark. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. You do need some space, but I'm gonna show you, uh, you know, just some cool techniques that you can use to make this happen. So finally, what I came up with was lightweight uh, it was really simple to piece together and as you can see from some of these pictures it made the set It just really looked cool uh, and uh, and I was able to put some of the thinner birch trees in with the ones that I made and nobody could tell the difference as a matter of fact one of my favorite stories is during intermission I had a lady who came up and she had to touch the trees because she couldn't believe that that they were fake <laughs> so that's what you want you know in theater you want to be able to fake out audiences all the time you know if you want it for your store display or for your house man no you, you can make this stuff and it looks real uh, and you can have people come up really close and I'm gonna show you other ways that you can really sell it so it looks like actual birch okay so there's a couple ways to go and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be painting on paper what I have here is tag board Tag board is kind of thin. Uh, it has, you see, a glossy side. That's this side here, and then a matte side. You want the matte side if you're using tag board, but, um, and tag board's pretty inexpensive, uh, and it's very pliable, but, if you're working in the theater, that also means that it's a little bit more, um, it's less hardy uh, and it's harder to store. Uh, and if you stack it up in storage, it might get kind of banged up. So uh, what I actually like using the most is mat board. Mat board comes a little bigger uh, and it's, it's thick. This is what you mat your pictures with. Uh, so it's, you know, it's about, uh, 30 seconds thick, a little thicker than a sixteenth of an inch, thicker than a quarter and stuff. Um, but uh, it comes, it comes bigger. What I do sometimes is I make them out of both because I can use the thin stuff to actually help. Uh, you know how birch has those curled, uh, you know the the bark gets kind of curly and stuff. You can use the thin stuff to actually help sell and make the uh, the thick stuff look cooler. 
Okay, so I am gonna show you a couple different painting techniques today, and I'm gonna show you how to prep the paint. And this is gonna be a little bit messy, and you do, you do want a little bit of space where you really don't care if paint gets on some stuff, because you're gonna do some spattering, and I'm gonna show you how to do all that stuff. Uh, by the way, if you're just at your house, you can do this outside really easily with just putting a tarp down. It's really not that hard to do. Um, but I'm gonna go change into some grubby clothes, and I'll be right back. Ta-da! Here I am in grubby clothes. Okay, what I'm using here is just store-bought, flat, very cheap latex paint. I don't need expensive paint, and I'm looking for the flat stuff. But what most people don't know is that you can cut this with water really easily. You can thin it out with water, and I'm just adding a little bit of water until I get the consistency of about whole milk. This makes latex paint very spatterable. That just means I'm going to be able to fling it on the surface a little bit and uh, get some droplets of paint on the work. We've got three colors that we're using. I'm using a little bit of tan. Again, too, I've made this spatterable, so I've watered this down so it's about the consistency of whole milk. Same thing with the black and, uh, and same thing with the white. Uh, but just three colors, black, tan, white, painting on white. And I'm going to be using a Hudson sprayer too. So this actually just is full of water. I want to work very watercolory. Uh, so we're going to try and uh, just get the whole piece of, of mat board wet first. And then in an ideal world, uh, you'll be using a different brush uh, for every color and then one to drag. Uh, so this one gets put in a bamboo stick and then I've got uh, three different brushes. This will be uh, let's say white, this will be black, and this will be tan. And then what I've got here is a bamboo pole uh, with uh, rubber bands on it. Again, too, since I'm working on the ground, uh, I like to be able to stand up when I can. Uh, so I'm just putting the brush in here, uh, and I've, I've taken a, a, a knife and I've slit these things. So, so I'm just gonna put this, the brush handle right into this bamboo rod. Okay, and then the first thing to do is to get the mat board wet. You want to get the top surface wet. You don't need to drench the whole thing, but you're basically just applying some water to the top. You could do this with a paintbrush too. The technique I'm using today is spattering and dragging. This is going to be my dragging brush. That's the one in the bamboo stick. Uh, and uh, spattering is basically using very watered down paint. Like I said, it's gonna be the consistency of uh, low fat milk. Uh, you're putting it on a brush and then you're just tapping it, uh, you're tapping it against your hand uh, to create tiny little droplets. And then I'm dragging those droplets out with the drag brush. This is the one that doesn't have any paint on it. Uh, that gives kind of a neat grain. I use this for wood graining all the time in the theater uh, and it works particularly well for birch bark. It really does sell it, it makes it look cool. Uh, so I'll show you, first of all, how I'm gonna be spattering. Spattering with a full brush will give you big droplets on your work, but then as you continue, those droplets will get smaller. In this technique, I'm holding the brush sideways so I can get some lines or some streaks of little paint droplets. And that's sort of the tomahawk, and this is the hand hit. And then I take the dry brush and I drag out what I just spattered. And this creates an interesting sort of grain. Uh, it's not really like what we're calling wood grain, but you know, this bark does have a direction. And so as you drag these spatter droplets out, you're going to see something that looks a lot more uh, barky. It's already starting to look like birch. And then you just repeat the process. So again, spattering and then making my lines with the spatter and then dragging it out. A finer point here is sometimes you wanna leave some of those droplets on there. You don't have to drag everything out. And then I'm on to the next color. Uh, I'm gonna try some tan here. Uh, and, and, uh, and now I'm tapping littler droplets on there. And then I'm dragging out what I want to. I don't have to drag every bit out. And you just keep adding layers like this really until you're happy, until it looks the way you want it to look. If you feel like it's getting too dark, then you can add some white. As a matter of fact, on this work, I will be adding some white. But it's look, it's starting to shape up, you know? So now I'm making my white lines and I'm doing that tomahawk spatter technique. 
And this time I'm just using the white brush and I'm, I'm just uh, dragging it out with that. Okay, so we're working pretty wet here, um, but notice what the water does is it starts making some things pool up. Over here, you can sort of see it doing its thing. Let me get a better angle on that where it's a little less glary. You can sort of see that it's marbling. Now, after I, I let it dry just a couple minutes, I'm going, to, I'm going to bring it up here onto the workbench uh, where I will then be doing some hand brushing on it. I'm using a smaller paintbrush here to make those black lines that are very familiar and very indicative of a birch pattern. And what I'm doing is I'm just holding the brush parallel to the grain that we've created and I'm just moving slightly up and down but mostly from side to side. And this can, this is, there's really, you got to channel your inner Bob Ross here. There's really no wrong way to do this. Uh, you just, you just are trying to make, you know, creative little lines that go from side to side. Once you step away from the work, you'll see that it looks right. And then I go in later and uh, if those aren't dark enough, I, I just fill in some of the, the uh, middles of those things with some darker black paint. And this is just black paint. I've got a few demos now. I've done two of them on tag board. So this is a little bit more flimsier. On one of them, I painted the back tan. More on that later. This one is just uh, also on tag board, but untreated on the back side. And then this is the big one. This is the mat board one. Now, you've got options. Uh, really, if you know how to make the bark, you can do anything you want. Uh, to mimic a tree. For instance, all you would have to really, look at, all I gotta do is roll this up and I've just about got a log. <laughs> I mean, it's ready to go. Uh, you could tape that or you could put a piece of wood through here and then staple the edges to it uh, and, and you'd have a nice lightweight log. And the cool thing is you can widen it. <laughs> this is a pretty big log now. I'm gonna show you different ways how you can fill the ends. Uh, but uh, I also love it that you could, you could take two of these things and roll them together. You could take three of them, you know, and after a while you've got something that looks like a birch branch or a birch tree uh, and you can mimic it that way. This is great for the stage. Uh, when you've got something big like this, uh, I'm going to show you for, for theatrical applications my favorite way to use this birch skin. Okay, I've got a couple samples here of how we're able to take just standard lumber. So this is a one by six uh, and, and you can staple this birch bark onto it. Now you've got something that could be a door frame uh, or you can just sort of put this, however you want to decorate your stage, your store, your home, uh, you, can, you can put this anywhere. You know, it's, 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 it can just go up against something like this and it's, uh, it's a great way to have a birch accent. And you can do it on thinner boards too. So this is just one that uh, is done on a one by four. So basically what I'm gonna do, just I'm gonna demo one of these things for you, is I'm gonna cut this piece into strips and then I'm gonna staple it onto a board just like I did with this one uh, and you can see how we do the whole thing. So I'm gonna cut this, if I, if I want this to go on a uh, one by six, I'm cutting the width of this bark eight inches. If I want my, if I'm gonna mimic something like this and it's on a one by four, I'm going to cut the width of this birch bark six inches. Okay, so this is my six inch wide piece and this is my eight inch wide piece. Okay, I wanna show you a quick trick. Uh, you're gonna wanna bend this. Matt board doesn't like to take a bend, so it often will kink. 
So the best thing I found to do is to get this side wet and then roll it around something. I got a piece of steel here uh, and, uh, and this one I sort of pre-did. If you, if, you, if you just take a piece of steel, again too, you're gonna make this side wet, the unpainted side, just get it wet, damp, you know, spray it. Um, and then you're gonna just sort of pre-roll it like this. Uh, then you don't get kinks. Then it won't look all, you know, like you got weird folds or something in the paper. So uh, that's just a, a quick trick that you can try. This uh, bark is 40 inches and so is the board. And that's just gonna be nicer for later. So here's what we do. You just get, uh, you wanna make sure you, you uh, get the edge of the bark flush with the back of the board. And again too, I just have a click stapler and you just start stapling. Okay, so then what you get is this cool split log uh, and this can become a border for any sort of thing. And now this is for a theatrical application, perhaps if you're working in film or if you're doing uh, a store display or something and you don't want it, you can certainly touch these staples up. You can also experiment with gluing them, uh, but this is, uh, this is how I've done it, is I've just stapled them on, uh, onto pieces of wood like this. Here we have a smaller tree log and here is a fatter tree log split. And so this is great because now it's got a backer and this can be fastened to anything wooden uh, or even we've, we fastened it to steel uh, in one of our shows too. Okay, and what's great here is you can cut away parts of this bark and then cross these things so you can actually make interesting birch uh, you know, patterns. We did this for a show where we crossed them like this. Uh, and and the, all you gotta do is cut that portion of bark away and then this back, this board can go and attach to this board. It just becomes so versatile. Not only that, is that you can later, if you want to, you can store these things. As a matter of fact, these, Old ones here have been stored. They've been, uh, we just put them into to prop storage and we just pile them up. We're not even, we don't baby them <laughs> uh, because they're easy to repair. If you've got more of these, what we do is we just pop some of this uh, birch bark off of one of the boards and we put it on another one and we can repair it with actual birch bark if we want, or we can repair it with the, uh, the stuff that we make. And you've seen how easy it is to make the stuff. You know, the, the birch bark is really, really, really super easy. Uh, so this one had some holes here, you see. Uh, this is where we took a screw gun and we were putting screws. That's how you screw it to a, a, the board, you know. Boom, boom, like that. And then look, we just cover it over with a flap. Audience never sees the holes. Uh, and, uh, and it just, it looks very natural because this is what birch bark does. It does this. Okay, so how do you fill, how do you fill the ends here? Uh, spray foam. It's, it's, it's so easy and it's very paintable. Uh, so you just take the spray foam and you just fill the ends just like this. And then that'll expand, you let that dry and you cut it off. You do the other end just like this. Boom, done, we did it. Okay, so this is another option. What I've done is I've sprayed uh, foam all over the board too, so that when, it's, uh, when it dries, it's all gonna be one texture. So then when I come and saw that off, uh, you won't see the, the little board here. So that's just another option for you. The spray foam that I'm using is Great Stuff Pro, uh, and it's uh, the window, <laughs> window and door treatment, so. 
Go pick some of that stuff up at your local home center. I'll probably leave a link in the description for you to get more of that spray foam. We call it stupid foam because it's so stupid. Okay, a quick word about the spray foam. Uh, you could get the, at your home center, you could get the great stuff that comes in the, the, the disposable can that you, you know, it's got the straw on it and the little plastic trigger. I was using that for years, but this is the way to go because you can actually reuse this again and again and again. Uh, this, you wanna get one of these guns uh, and shoot this stuff because uh, then you can save this can. I found that when I was using the other stuff, the disposable can, I was wasting so much uh, because once it dries in the middle of that straw, you can't get that spray foam out again. It's just, I, I've never had good luck with it. But in this, you just uh, shut this down. As soon as you're done using it, you just seal the air and it seals it at the tip. Uh, so then you can use this again and again and again. Also, I just sprayed this like four minutes ago and it's already dry. This stuff dries way quicker. It's a little bit more weirdly fluorescent, but look at, I just put this in like four minutes ago, less, and it's already uh, hardening up. So uh, it's, it's, a big, it's been a big time saver. Uh, Great Stuff Pro, I use the uh, window and door uh, stuff. That's been my favorite one. Uh, go pick yourself some of that up too. Okay, then I wanted to quickly show you how you can take some of this stuff. This is the tag board bark that I made. Uh, and this is the one that I sprayed the back of. You can cut strips of this off to make cool little, you know how birch has that, uh, that <laughs> the, the, the bark that peels off of it? Uh, you can mimic that and I'll show you quickly how to do that while we're waiting for this to cure the rest of the way. Okay, so I just take my razor knife uh, and again too, this is the, the bark that's treated on the back uh, and I can just, cut little stuff off of it like that. So, okay, now I got a little schnibble. Um, I can I can do really what el whatever I want, but I'm gonna make this kind of come to a head like that. Now, I've got something that I can curl this. I can curl this kind of the opposite way. So I've got something that looks like that. And, oh, I already did one here for you. <laughs> you can sort of see that it, it peels off there like that. So I can get that coming off of here too. I'll do it up here. And I just use a 3M spray adhesive and I can just blast the end of this real fast. Try not to get it on your hands because kind of like the spray foam, it doesn't want to come off, but it's quick and easy. Okay, we'll let that dry up. And then this will curl. Something like that. And here's another fun thing you can try. You can actually put real birch bark on here and it looks awesome. Let me show you that. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking uh, the 3M spray adhesive. Just blast, oh, I should do that in the camera so you can see it. Uh, just blasting some of it like that. I don't even need all of this, but uh, well, Whatever. I'll, I'll put it around the back like this. So now you got, now you got a birch log that for all intents and purposes, I kind of, I, I just wrapped it around the back. You could get more artistic, but I was just doing this real fast for the camera. Okay, a lot of times when I'm cutting foam, I use a little saw that looks like this. This is an Irwin. Uh, it's just a, a little handheld saw. It's got a very flexible blade. Uh, now, by the way, when I cut into this, again, too, I just put this on. It was less than 10 minutes ago. Uh, I can tell that it's still sort of soft in there, but for the video, I'm just gonna do it. Uh, but you can just sort of see that this stuff cuts off like that. Once this is you know, on your display or on your set or whatever, there's no way an audience is gonna say that that's anything but wood. Now, I'll, I'll paint that tan just to sort of convince you. Okay, so this is, uh, this is how the ends of that split kind of log would look. 
And same thing here. So looks pretty cool. And uh, this is the this is the one that I didn't cover the uh, board with. You know, from a distance, who cares? Really can't tell the difference. Okay, and this one I just made up today. I've never made a log like this, but this is actually kind of cool. Um, the paint's still a little bit wet, but again, too, too, who cares? I just painted that same tan on the uh, on the ends, uh, and you can sort of smear that around. And it looks like this. It, it it's a uh, you know one might say it looks a little too perfect, but again, too, if you dress it around with uh, with peeling bark and stuff, you know, it's good. It's cool, and it's light. There's nothing in this, <laughs> you know, so it's it's super light. And then what I like to do too is one of the things you can do is you can just take a little bit of flat uh, or satin moss green rust oleum uh, and you can kind of just dust over some of these things. Uh, and that gives it a little bit like maybe it's been laying on the ground or there's been some moss growing on these things. Just little spatters here and there. And it looks pretty cool. Okay, so can you tell which of these is the real one? None of them. They're none of them real. They're all fakey, fake Fakertons. So these are the ones that I did today. This one right here uh, and uh, this one right here. These are the ones that are a little greener. Um, and this is the one that I just made up today. This is the round one. My, my philosophy is if you, if you can mimic this, if you can mimic the bark, you can make anything look like birch. So hey, if you got something out of this, uh, give this a thumbs, a, a, a green thumbs up. Uh, and until the next video, I'll see you later. Bye bye.